going to take a couple of minutes here uh, to really just um, look at uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3. where it says in verse one, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of Elohim, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, and avoid such men as these. For among them are those who enter into households and captivate weak women, weighed down with sin, led on by various impulses, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Um, you know, just looking at this um, from the perspective that um, in these verses here, um, Paul is speaking to um, speaking about how women in particular can be led astray um, by these um, people who come around and they have a form of godliness, um, but they but they deny the power thereof. Um, and so when we're looking at a form of godliness, um, you know. All of these things in this list has to do with the ego. It has to do with the I. It has to do with the boasting in ourselves and in carnality. And in particular, that these men, um, they are doing these things that look holy um, for their own gain, for their own benefit. Um, but when you look at their heart, because you know you can see on the outside they may be doing things, but when you look on the inside, it's all of these things that are unclean and all these things um, that are not going to enter into the kingdom um, of heaven. Um, and so it's important for women in particular to not get um, caught up and to see people and men in particular who have a form of godliness, um, who may walk around with fringes and ZZ on, um, who may have the lingo of the scriptures, who may be able to quote scripture outright, um, just have it memorized, um, or who may be even um, keeping the Shabbat and, and the holy days and, and you know, may even call themselves uh, ministers and teachers of the word. Um, if they have this form of holiness, but the power is from their ego, the power is driven not from the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of them, but from this desire to be perceived as such. Um, you know, we have to flee, we have to run um, from these people because they will captivate women especially those who are weighed down with sins, weighed down with uh, past histories, weighed down with present circumstances, um, you know, uh, particularly looking at um, women who may be single mothers, women um, who, who may be struggling with different things, women who, um, you know, just may need some help even. Um, but they're, they, they're weighed down with different things um, and led on by various impulses. So we have to be careful, um, particularly women of these um, different people. Um, 
when we skip down to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses uh, 16 through 17, it says here that all scripture is inspired by Elohim and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of Elohim may be adequate, equipped for every good work. And so the way to avoid being tricked by these, um, these different people is to get into the word, um, be corrected by the word, be taught by the word, and be trained in righteousness. Um, because sometimes, you know, we may come into this faith and we don't receive any training. We don't have... Um, the, uh, the um, tightest situation where the older women are teaching the younger women. We don't have the, the five-fold ministry where we have the, the pastors and the teachers and the evangelists and, and the prophets. We don't have the, the structure that provides instruction for us in righteousness. And so, and, you know, we have, to be, we have to be washed and cleansed by this word. Um, and the scripture says that the ministry, the reason that the ministry is given is so that people aren't tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. So if we want to be trained in righteousness, you know, we have to come into teaching of righteousness, teaching that's centered on the word of Yah, um, teaching that isn't from an egocentric perspective like we see at the beginning of uh, this chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 3, but teaching that comes from the Holy Spirit um, within, um, because that's the only real true um, people of Yah. You can't be a Hebrew outwardly if you aren't one inwardly first, um, and so a lot of people walk around and call themselves Hebrews. A lot of people walk around and call themselves Israel. A lot of people walk around and call themselves believers and followers of Yahshua, but they deny that power. They deny that spirit. They deny that Ruach. And because they're doing it from an outward and an external and an, an ego motivated way, these are people who are already lost. And so if you're going to follow their leadership, you're going to follow them on the path that, that they are going. So, um, you know, this was something that, that has been heavy on my heart because we have so much access to information now. And if we don't have the, the spirit um, teaching us and we don't have a firm foundation in the word, in the Holy Scriptures, um, and, and, you know, speaking about the scriptures is, you know, the 66 books of the Bible, um, the canon of the word, and we don't have a good understanding of this, then we can be led astray by every single wind of doctrine. And, and, and this is what to expect. It's not, it shouldn't be even a surprise, but this is something that we should expect in the last days that we are living in. So we have to prove ourselves, you know, as trumpets and the Day of Atonement and the fall feasts are coming up upon us. And as we are about to enter into the sixth month, the month of Elul, in a couple weeks here, we have to be um, careful to even inspect ourselves and make sure that we aren't serving him without denying the power, but that we are serving him, you know, through that Ruach, through that power, um, through his spirit of holiness that he puts inside of us, uh, that we are truly um, being disciples of Yahshua, truly being taught and trained, um, not just casual listeners of the word, but actual students of the scripture um, and being teachable and that we can be corrected um, when we are wrong. Second Timothy chapter two. Um, verse 21 we'll start here well when he talks about um um i guess let's start at 20 now in a large house this is uh, verse 20 now in a large house there are not only gold and silver vessels 
but also vessels of wood and of earthenware, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Therefore, if a man cleanses himself from these things, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. Now flee from youthful lust and pursue righteousness, faith, mm -hmm. love, and peace with those who call on Yahweh with a pure heart, but refuse foolish and ignorant speculations, knowing that they produce quarrels. And, the, and Yah's bondservant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to all, able to teach, patient when wronged, with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition, if perhaps Elohim may grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. So a person who's a true bond servant of Yah isn't gonna go around just judging people and condemning them <laughs> and doing all of that. But if they're gonna bring correction to a person, it's going to be in gentleness. Um, and it's not, we're, it's, it wouldn't be like, you know, condemnation, mm -hmm. but correcting them with the hopes that they will repent and, you know, come into the knowledge of truth. Um, but this is, this is where I was at with relating this to the prayer call in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 22, where it says, now flee from youthful lust and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call upon Yah with a true heart, a pure heart, sorry. So when we're praying, you know, we're calling upon Yah with a pure heart. And so we want to be those who are, you know, vessels of honor, right? And, right. Um, and also those who aren't going to give ear to any of these uh, kind of seducing doctrines and these seducing um, people who mm -hmm. um, are not being led by the spirit of Yah that are trying to come in and take us off the path. So, you know, we want to be those who call upon Yah with a pure heart. And so to do that, you, you really have to examine yourself, make sure you're, you know, make sure these things here aren't things that's inside of you. Um, because the, you know, the fall holy days is all about um, self-examination and um, not being judged by man, but coming before the, the, you know, the judge of judge, the king of the universe. Anything to say about that? I mean, um, verse 13 okay. in Second Timothy chapter 3. Okay. You want to read it? Oh, I can. Um, the evil men and seducers mm -hmm. shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like with it kind of like correlates with verses um, one through seven about the type of people that will rise up in the last days. But these people are going to be kind of like, they're going to only going to basically end up with the people that they are. It's mm -hmm. like a self-examination, you know, in a sense, but they're going to only end up with the type of people that they are because yeah. there, there something is not, it's a, it's a form of uncleanness mm -hmm. that is in their spirit. So it's, it's like they're on, they're only going to end up with the people, the type of people that they are. So it's it's not going to be nothing to where they're just out here and they're able to to take hold, lay hold on actual just righteous, truly just righteous people. So it's it's going to be like what well, says here on that they. Um... Uh, enter into households and take captive weak women. That's, you know, verse six. So if you are, you know, if you aren't weak, if you're empowered by his spirit, you're not going to be taken captive you yeah. know, by, uh, by that. Um, but the verse here, the thing here that, that um, you know, I'm looking at is 
where it says deceiving and being deceived because i believe that some people especially who have the form of of holiness and of godliness and of righteousness they truly mm -hmm. think they're holy and they truly think they're righteous they don't you know i you know some of them probably you know what i mean i don't know everybody you know what i mean some of them mm -hmm. probably know exactly what they're doing they have total knowledge but there is a strong delusion that you you know i can make myself holy i can make myself righteous if I take this list of commandments and I do each and every one of them, I can work my way into the kingdom of heaven and right. bypass the work of Messiah and the work of the spirit. And that's a deception and a strong delusion. Um, because uh, just because you're doing the commandment doesn't make you holy or righteous. You know, that starts from the inside out. Um, so but i agree with you that if if um we as women are learned in the word trained in the word um studied in the word have that holy spirit in us um and are taught and functioning um you know where there are um you know where there's the uh the working of the spirit the fivefold ministry um and uh teachers um, of righteousness, you know, that we can really, um, you know, we can really be held accountable and that no one can come in and just lead people astray um, by every wind of doctrine. Yeah. So I appreciate yeah. your, um, your comment there.